Hi folks and welcome to the fourth part in our pie crawler assembly videos. Paul started by running this Python zeroing servo program. Negative, positive and signal. Now it zeroes. And now we can continue with the assembly. But at this point, Paul ran into a problem. They're asking you to hold this at 90 degrees like yes. that. No, the servo black box yes. is not is not fixed to this yet. No. And so whilst you're holding that at 90 degrees, you've got to put the servo in so that these holes here, that one there and that one there, line up with that one there and that one there. But it's, it's very difficult to do that because everything's so sloppy. Now, I think maybe it might help if this black servo box was fixed to this component first that it's zeroed then because this black box is fixed to this it will be easy to get this at 90 degrees yes. and this is already lined up because it's already fixed right so in order to do that it means that this rivet assembly is put in afterwards so i think i'm going to try that i'll tell you something else as well see how there's a gap there mm -hmm. And there, they should have provided standoffs so that you can wind these screws in tight. Mm. Because if I wind them in too tight, all mm. it'll do is bend those arms and snap them off. So, see, it's 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can we put this pot rivet back in? That's what we're wondering, isn't it? Mushroom sure could there go there in between those two components. I can see it won't go in. Yeah, it won't go in. Ah, that's why they'll tell you to do it the other way. Yeah. It should have spaces, standoff spaces, there and there, so that when you tighten these screws up, it doesn't just bend these uh, arms of the servo around. Because mm -hmm. the way it is, it's not a very good mechanical fixing. And also, putting the servo in first enables us to more accurately align the arms, 90 right. degrees. So this assembly order is better, apart from the fact that we can't get the pop rivet in now. That's right. But the pop rivet itself isn't an ideal fixing yeah. as a bearing for the other side of the arm. Yeah. So what, we, what we're going to try is getting the right size metric nut, pushing it up through there, still with the washer in between the two components and using a nylock nut on the other side to secure that point, which will be much better than the plastic pop rivet. And it also allows us to alter the assembly order to put the servo in, in a different order, which makes the assembly easier and we can then put some standoffs in as well. So the hardware has arrived now. So the extra hardware that we're using, these two nylon spacers, which are M2, 2.5 by five millimeters. This uh, machine screw, which is uh, an M3 by six millimeter pan head hex drive, along with its nut and three washers. So back to the assembly now, Paul. Uh-huh. So you put in the standoff in at this point. Yeah, that's right. So now we can tighten the screw down and it tightens against the standoff rather than pulling the lugs down. It's a much better uh, mechanical fixing, much more secure and holds the, uh, the servo much uh, more firmly. It was still fiddly to do though, wasn't it? Yep, but it's much more satisfying. It's the right thing to do. So that was the program there for zeroing the servo. Mm -hmm. You just zeroed the servo before you started attaching this second part to it. That's right. And then the screw's going in now because the servo's zeroed. It's still connected to the uh, pie hat, which is um, keeping it zeroed in case I were to move it. Now, this is a difficult bit, putting in the uh, machine screw with uh, the washer and nut assembly. It's tremendously fiddly, but it did allow us to uh, put the uh, servo on in the uh, in a different order. So and part of this process some... is yeah using thread lock because uh, that we found out that nylock nuts are actually a little bit too tall to fit in, so we've had to use normal nuts, but we put a little bit of thread lock on them so that uh, they can be tightened up to the right torque, and then after six hours time they won't undo themselves when the um, when the servers are moving, when the Raspberry Pi's, when the, sorry, pie, when the uh, pie crawler's crawling. So this is the foot part now. You're putting the servo arm on the foot part. Yep. This is the bit that touches the floor. 
You can see those screws are far too long. Yeah, uh, you're they going... Didn't, they didn't pr mm, provide any others. No. You're going to um, do a 3D print, like, little caps for them, aren't Just you? to cover them, yeah. Same procedure again. Putting the uh, servo in with its uh, nylon spacers. I know I had to um, cut quite a bit out because sometimes when you were trying to put things in, like oh, little yeah. washers, yeah, it's not. They, it, they, it was like tiddlywinks. They yeah. just fly across I mean, the room. It, the assembly didn't really go as slick as it might appear here, uh, frankly. Um, because it's so fiddly, it's yeah. so tiny. The parts. And of course, there's there's not much room to assemble. You can see the screwdrivers yeah. at, a, at an angle there as well. So touching the foot now, Paul. Yeah. So. So you zero in the servo. You zero the servo. There it goes. And then we turn it uh, ninety degrees because it's not pushed down properly on the servo, so it moves until you put the screw in. Mm -hmm. And then when you put the screw in, it pulls the arm down onto the servo splines and it locks it in position. So you've, you've moved it now, mm. and so, now yeah, you're we're plugging just it back into plugging the Plugging it back in, and we can so hopefully pie. it moves it back to 90 degrees. And you, well, we can see it moves it back to yeah, 90 degrees. Yeah, it did. Oh, I think you're putting some more thread lock on uh, another yep, nut and bolt now. Yeah, I was just now. trying to put it on a different way, the thread lock this time. Yes. Put it on like that then and screw it. Because the thread lock's supposed to be on both surfaces. Yeah. So the thread lock's already on the end of the bolt there as it's pushed in. You don't need much. Just It's just enough to, f to fill the threads. I put in a, that, those washers were so difficult, weren't they? Incredible, yeah. Yeah, those were things... <laughs> They kept flying off, didn't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in, I was reduced uh, in the end uh, to put a blue tack on the end of the tweezers to stop. Oh, things, did you? Yeah, to stop things flying out. <laughs> oh dear! So it's like brain surgery. <laughs> so you can wind it up all the way and then back it off a little bit until you get the right um, tight. You want you want to be as tight as possible without actually restricting the servo. So that's the whole leg there. And then after that, you did these three legs in exactly the same manner, yes, didn't you? Yes, yes. And then you put the servos... Yeah, I suppose you call these the hip servos yeah, for the pie crawler. On the main body. These are rather easy to attach. It yeah. was one of the easier parts of the assembly because you can... Um, you've actually got space to see what you're doing. Mm. And these servers actually fix right down onto the aluminium chassis as well without standing a little bit proud, so they don't need spaces. So you're putting the last servo in now, aren't you? The last servo, and then we should uh, be able to attach the legs. Let's all four on. And now you're attaching the second leg because you attached one first before I started filming, just to see how it went on, didn't you? That's right, yeah. Um, these servos are zeroed, again, before attaching the legs, and whilst the servos are zero this time, you attach the legs at 45 degrees to the body. Mm. Nice and fiddly again, Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderfully restricted access and yeah. uh, virtually obstructing your own vision. And finally, you zeroed the servo. So now Paul has got the other two legs on. Amazingly, the pie crawler is almost fully assembled. We're uh, at the stage of completing the wiring. I've already done some, I'm just going to finish it off now. Plug in all the uh, servos in the right port. You can see them, they're labelled P0 to P11. And just above it, uh, plug in the ultrasonic uh, module into the right port as well. So, yeah. 
Okay, so this is the elbow joint. Let's find the P10. The servo here. Where's the P9? Well, that's it. They're all in now. So all the servo, all the servos are connected back to the Pi hat, and we have the ultrasonic module now. It's got four wires. It's black, red, white. Black, red. White. Confusingly goes to yellow. Not much space put in these in. And the yellow wire going to another of the digital ports. The one above it. That's it, all the wires are in place. So that's it, basically now it's fully assembled, but it's a, a bit of a mess with all the cables, isn't it, Paul? That's right, yeah, we've got to put this um, white spiral wrap on. But one or two other people who bought this kit had said that cabling is an issue. It's not really been thought out properly. We've noticed that from the beginning with the video cable. They're all in the right place and they, they, they should work, but uh, the cable routing has not really been thought out properly. And uh, they've give you this spiral wrap to tidy it up as much as possible, but I, I can imagine it's gonna be quite difficult to put on. I mean, all these servo wires are all the same length, but they're all coming from different positions. So if we take this leg here, for instance, all these servo wires that come out of this leg are different, uh, are the same length, but because they're all coming from different positions, this one's short, this one's like medium, and this one's very long. I see what you're saying. It's difficult to put the spiral wrap on yeah. because they're all different mm. lengths. That's right. So do you think there might be an, an alternative way to sort of tie them together in a semi-neat fashion? Yeah, I think what we should do, first of all, is power it up and go through the first exercise to make sure... Uh, it's working and all the wires are in the right place, which uh, I'm pretty confident they are. And then once we've done that, um, try and neaten it up with um, either very fine cable ties or just uh, another way of fastening groups of wires together, which is quite useful, is just uh, tying them together with uh, loops of cotton to try and neaten it up that way. We have got a project in mind, haven't we? a sort of cosmetic project which is to actually make a cosmetic covering for the pie crawler out of latex and that would keep all the cables neatly under itself wouldn't it yeah that's right the, the cables need some sort of uh, loose um, or some sort of neatening up maybe with uh, cable fine cable ties or cotton like i said but it's still going to be a fair mess of spaghetti here. But um, if we can imagine all those sort of then squashed down and covered over by a latex covering here, mm -hmm. uh, that, that should neaten it up. Yeah, but it, but it's um, I think it's another issue that Sun founder, the makers of this kit, have not really thought out properly. So this completes the assembly of the pie crawler. In the next video. Paul will be testing it and running the calibration. And you want to try out running a little program before you start tidying up those wires. Yeah, we want to uh, calibrate it and then run one or two of the supplied sketches to make sure that everything's uh, OK. And then at that point, we can try and tidy the wiring up a little bit. So that's it for this last assembly video. And I hope you'll join us for our next video which is going to be the first video where we're actually using the pie crawler.